it came out as a report that the Giants never offered Russell Wilson a starting job when they met for their exploratory meeting. He was basically offered the backup job and only the backup job because the Giants apparently still believe in Daniel Jones as their starter. But we also heard uh, apparently Joe Shane and Brian Dable are completely done with uh, Daniel Jones. John Schneider, the GM of the Seattle Seahawks, wanted to re-sign Drew Locke, who is now the backup of the Giants. But uh, apparently he was told that Drew Locke went to the Giants because he had an opportunity to compete for the starting job. Drew Locke responded in the opening press conference for the New York Giants by saying this. Daniel Jones is the, is the starter of this team, and that, that's, that's been conveyed to me. Now I need to come in and push Daniel to be the best he can be, and that's the role that I've played for Geno. That's the role that I played for Teddy. That's the role that Brett Rippon played for me when I was a starter in Denver. I've had both sides of this. You know, I've been the guy to push a starter, and I've been the starter that's being pushed by the backups. Um, it's all about making that room as, as best it can be. And if we do that, um, you know, sky's the limit for this team. Drew Lock. <laughs> Sky is the limit, apparently. Um, yeah, currently the Giants hold the sixth overall draft pick in this uh, this year's draft. So they have a lot of options. Could go wide receiver, could go quarterback, could go offensive line if they still need help with that. There's a lot of options, but currently it looks like Daniel Jones is the starter in week one. But I want to know, do you agree with that? Do you think Daniel Jones should be the starting quarterback in week one? And if not, who do they go to? Uh I, I, I do. I do think that he ought to get a chance to be the starter because he, he lost his job by getting hurt with an ACL. So generally when you're the starter, you get hurt, you come back and have a chance uh, to to start again. That didn't happen when Bledsoe got hurt and Brady came in, but that was a totally different situation. But here, I think that Jones should get the opportunity to start. I think that uh, he'll be on a short leash. Uh, if he performs like he did last year, he'll be out of there and Locke will be in there, I'm pretty sure. And for the fact that they're, they're trying to create a quarterback controversy, the Locke will c compete for the starting job came from the Seahawks GM, yeah. right? Not from the Giants. It came from the Seahawks GM, who was sour grapes, that uh, he lost Drew Locke. And, and uh, you know, he could have hung on to him, but maybe if he'd given him a, a contract that would was any money at all because Locke left for one year, five million bucks. I mean, that's not much, right? So, and it's only one year. So I, uh, I, I think that, um, the GM for the Seahawks is maybe putting that out there because he's a little sour grapes. And I do think the, you know, Locke, he knew he wasn't going to be the starter when he came here. Uh, they, they told him he was, he had, uh, every opportunity to compete for the starting job. First thing he says is, I know I'm not the starter. I'm here to back up Daniel Jones and make him the best he can be. So, uh, I, uh, I think that, uh, Daniel Jones will be the starter. I do think that unless he plays really well this year, which is probably doubtful that he will be gone at the end of uh, this year because they have a way to get off him. He's got, uh, he's scheduled for $30 million in 2025, 23 million of that guaranteed. And it's got an injury, one of those injury deals in it, like Russell Wilson had. So. I think if you see him pay uh, just average or not so good and the Giants have a losing record, when you get near the end of the season, they'll bench him so he doesn't kick, he doesn't get hurt and kick in that injury money, yeah. and Drew Locke will be out there and Daniel Jones will be gone. That's my prediction. Well, I agree with you. Daniel, this, this will be Daniel Jones' last season unless we see a 45-touchdown, 4,500-yard 4, season, which... 45 touchdowns? You don't think he would there, hang there on to him with no 30, reason, 35 touchdowns? There is no reason that Daniel Jones would stay unless we have a, of, of like a top five quarterback performance. Let Screw top 10 because people thought 15 touchdowns and five interceptions. If you want to add the rushing touchdowns, 22 total touchdowns and five picks was top 10 quality. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And you know what? He got paid like a top 10 quarterback. And look what he did year one. Two touchdowns, six picks. Offensive line getting sacked. Yeah, we saw two other quarterbacks, one that was an undrafted uh, rookie free agent, run the offense better than Daniel Jones could dream of that season. Tyrod Taylor, the, a veteran who can't stay healthy, ran the offense better. Daniel Jones just could not perform very well, and uh, he was just terrible through and through. Uh, what I do find fascinating, though, is that you, you mentioned it a little bit. The Giants are really playing their card. It's a very, very risky maneuver here this season. 
And I think Drew Locke, the signing of Drew Locke's kind of fascinating. Because if Daniel Jones gets injured again, which based on his history, we could say that it's not that unlikely. He's dealt with neck injuries, hamstring injuries, ankle injuries. Um, he's dealt with a lot. He just tore his ACL. What will happen is his entire 2025 salary becomes guaranteed and it'll cost the Giants $41.5 million in the year that they can get out from under him. So this season is very, very crucial for the Giants to play Daniel Jones safe. And that's why I think Drew Locke, it sort of gives him that opportunity to play Daniel Jones cautiously. So what will we see? If the offensive line is a little bit better than dead last, so let's say, let's be generous, they're not going to have a top uh, a 10 offensive line. I'm not even going to say they have an average offensive line at 16. Let's say they have the 20th best offensive line instead of dead last. An improvement, a 12-point improvement, which is pretty good. I think we'll see a different Daniel Jones. We won't see him running and escaping the pocket and making a bunch of scrambles. We won't see that, or we at least won't see it as frequently as we saw it before. He'll remain a pocket passer and try to make that work. And then, you know, I think it'll be what we've seen in the past two seasons with Derek Carr and with Russell Wilson the last three or four games. You know, if Daniel Jones makes it that far, which he might, but based on his injury history, it doesn't look great that that would happen. But if he does make it to the end of the season, I think the last three-ish games, we may see Drew Locke in there strictly for injury purposes. So the Giants, because I think, and I'll, I'll stick to it, he needs to have an MVP. I'm not saying he needs to lead the MVP conversation, but he needs to be, hey, Daniel Jones, you know, have this comeback player of the year. I, I, I'll, I'll be a little bit nicer. Not, not MVP, comeback player of the year. You might be right on that one. He needs to play that he's going to get some sort of accolade by the end I of the season. I don't think he needs 45 touchdowns to He be, needs to play to be, extremely well. He needs to play 4500 yards. He's he, got to have got yeah. to have uh, you know 3500 yards, so maybe 30 touchdown passes and the, and this is key, fewer a, a lot fewer interceptions, no more than 7 or 8. So based on that, he needs 300 more yards than he did in his top 10 MVP year and he needs double the touchdowns. Yeah. And and that's going to <laughs> I think that they'll hang you, on to him for another year. Do you think that's year. possible, though? Because I, I, for, I, I for sure don't. I, I don't think so. I don't think so because it. in order for him to have a good year the, the uh, year before last, he had, Saquon Barkley had a fantastic year, and they don't have yeah. that this year. They have Devin Singletary, and uh, he's not the same back as uh, Saquon Barkley for sure. They blew it there. They should have given the franchise tag to Daniel Jones and signed uh, – uh, Saquon Barkley to a longer term deal it would have been that, a lot that, better. Then they would out. then they yeah. would been off Daniel Jones. They would have had the money to go out and uh, compete for one of the other free agent quarterbacks. Well, not only that, currently let okay, let's say Daniel Jones finishes out the season, and let's just say based on the seventeen game average, he went one in five. So he wins what two and a half, three games by the end of the season, give or take. That's six games times it by three. Yeah, he wins three games. That's the number one overall pick in the draft. Uh, it might be number two. The Panthers, their record, I believe, was two and fifteen. Which they have have the number one overall pick, get the top quarterback, and go two and fifteen. So they would, have, they would have the number two overall pick in this year's draft if Daniel Jones just continued the trend that he had this past season. And lo and behold, what happens? They draft Jaden Daniels or Drake May. They get a top quarterback, and they could kind of hit the reset button on the quarterback position with a legitimate quarterback prospect. You drafted a quarterback from Duke. Duke's a basketball school, not a football school. At number six overall. You're not going to find a, a great quarterback from Duke, six overall, arguably in the history of college football. It ain't going to happen. No disrespect to Duke, but you're not seeing a lot of Duke guys. I think there's uh, Sonny Jorgensen, I believe, went to Duke. He's really the only guy, and he was, what, in the, I want to say in the 70s and the 80s? Like, that, it, well, yeah, once in 50 years, you might hit. It's not a good trend. So the draft, to draft Daniel Jones that high when he wasn't great in college, that's on the Giants. And not only that, you'll give him four years, $160 million because of one good season. And that's the thing. I'm not even calling it good because it's just better than what he had previously. You put that season up against any of the really good quarterbacks or even just the good quarterbacks in the NFL right now, would he break top 20? I don't think he would. I really like you put him against. I'm not even going to include the top quarterbacks. 
people now doubting Jalen Hurts. You put him like for instance, Sam Howell had a better year than Daniel Jones last season. Sam Howell had no offensive line, and he still went four and thirteen. Did Sam Howell get a job? He is. He's the backup quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, uh, let's see. Aiden O'Connell had a better season this season than he did than Daniel Jones did in his greatest season of all time, in my opinion. Like you can go through through bad quarterback performances. Deshaun Watson this season. Like Daniel Jones' best season might not break the top twenty of of any good quarterback season in the current NFL. Mm-hmm. And yet we're considering that top ten quarterback. No, no, no. It's just you're blinded by the fact that he was so awful. And he just minimized the turnovers with the same amount of lackluster offensive production that it's, oh, something's here. But in reality, it's maybe 5% better yeah. than what he was. Well, I think Brian Dable's job is uh, in jeopardy if 100%. they have a terrible season. Yeah. And uh, you know my prediction who the next coach would be. You still think Belichick gets a job? I do. No. No. I, uh I saw some recently. He doesn't want to be in the spotlight. So any of the top teams he wants to get away from. The Giants no, will be one of those I think he'll change his mind. Teams. Now he thought he was going to be able to pick from the litter there and go where he wanted to go, and that didn't happen. So he he's not in a position to be picky. If he wants to be a head coach again, he's going to have to go where the job is, and they offer it to him. Let me get to my answer now. And I still don't think Belichick gets a job unless a team is – he's not going to be one – let's say there's six coaches that get fired next season. He's not going to be one of the top three off the board, in my opinion. The Giants next season, the, just based on the contract, they'll have to go with Daniel Jones because you'd be paying him to sit on the bench. So my prediction is... No, I agree with that. They draft a quarterback at number six. Let's bring in the draft board again. They, they draft a quarterback at number six. So you're getting Penix, Bo Nix, or J.J. McCarthy. And my guess is the Vikings are going to be very, very fascinating and trained up to a top spot. I don't think the Giants would budge, so they might go to the seventh spot or the eighth spot because those teams don't need quarterbacks. They could use offensive linemen, but you could still get a pretty good offensive lineman at the 11th pick, which the Vikings currently hold. So my guess would be the Giants draft a quarterback, whether it's Knicks, J.J. McCarthy, or uh, Michael Penix, and my guess would be it's J.J. McCarthy, have him sit behind Daniel Jones, so Drew Locke's the third quarterback, or just wherever you want to put him. Sit behind both quarterbacks at one, whatever, whatever you want to put him on the depth chart but he won't start the game. He won't start any games. Let Daniel Jones ride into the sunset for the rest of the year, play as badly as he can, which is prone to happen. He's going to play probably poorly. And then you have your back, you have your quarterback for the future right there in the building with a year under the system. And then Brian Dable could argue, we're building for the future. We drafted my next prospect. Mm-hmm. I believe I can coach him up. But if, if they draft an offensive lineman, which is not a horrible draft choice because their offensive line is terrible, or if they draft a true wide receiver, whether it's Malik Neighbors or Romo Dunze, you have pieces in there for whatever quarterback's there, whether you stick with Daniel Jones, whether it's Drew Locke, whoever, they have a decent arsenal. Yeah. Why did they go get Drew Locke anyway? Why bother with that? I mean, if, they, if they're with them drafting six, they should draft a quarterback, a young quarterback, and have uh, uh, Tommy DeVito and the young quarterback duke it out for the backup job. Have Jan- Daniel Jones start if he stinks. Then the rookie gets a gets a crack at it. I, I don't understand why they brought Drew Locke in at all. That uh, doesn't make sense to me. I think it's because Daniel Jones may not start every game. I think we <sighs> could see a Russell Wilson and Derek Carr situation where the last two or three games, Daniel Jones will be benched, basically. Okay, but why wouldn't you want the rookie to be in there then? Well, currently, well, that's a good question. That, I mean, that's a very I good question. I mean, they, they they, they're that. the sixth pick. They should be able to get a pretty good... There'll be a good quarterback there, a good prospect. It's not a top three, but we could see a situation. No, but where if JJ McCarthy's there, you know, he would might be a good choice. He would. I, he wouldn't. I, he's not one of my top choices, but he wouldn't be a horrible choice. And I and I, I've said that JJ McCarthy isn't a first round prospect, but I didn't. I never. I never thought he was a horrible quarterback. I think he needs the right system to fit his strengths. Yeah. He can't face tremendous adversity. Otherwise, he might not be ready for it in year one. Which, I'm not saying he'll never be, but year one, it's tough. It is tough when you just came off of winning yeah, and a great you know culture. What? If you're going to be a franchise quarterback, a lot of the franchise ones uh, got playing time in their rookie year. Yeah. And uh, I don't know why I got Drew Locke there. I see him as a third wheel if you're going to draft a quarterback. I, th- I think that's uh, it's a good question of what if they don't. I, th- I think if I'm, I'm well, who, el- what, who else would they, they draft? Them. I mean, who's going to be great that's there? 
with all these quarterbacks that look good in this draft, right. who would you take over a quarterback if you're the Giants when you have big quarterback issues? Well, it would be an offensive lineman or a wide receiver. You could go Joe Walt. Yeah, maybe Shano, an offensive lineman. They're Malik terrible neighbors, at offensive Romo line. Yeah. I, I think it would probably be, and my guess would be, you, you're probably going to get an offensive lineman before you get uh, a wide receiver. I could be completely wrong. Their offensive line isn't bad, but the fact that you still have Evan Neal there, and Neal was horrible, you either need to move him into a guard position, which he's a little bit better at, he can get more help there, or you just bench him because he was one of the worst offensive linemen last season. He was Big a disappointment. Offense. Massive disappointment. So... I like your center. John Michael Schmitz is a good center. Andrew Thomas, uh, he's their best offensive lineman easily by far. You did get a couple pieces. Aaron Stinney, who used to play for the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. John Runyon. You also got Jermaine Illuminor. I believe he played for the Patriots, if I'm not mistaken. He was he was there early in his career. He played for the Raiders as well. Um, you, you got a couple pieces. Question is, though, how are they going to play? You drafted Andrew Thomas high, and it took him a whole year and a half, kind of, to get to where he is now. So my guess would be just based on the contract you're paying Daniel Jones to play, you're going to start him. Yeah, you're going to start him. And then I would say if he's towards the end of the year, I'd put Drew Locke in there or the rookie. If they draft the rookie quarterback, put the rookie yeah. in there. I don't know why they went and got Drew Locke. doesn't make sense to me. Could be because they don't trust Daniel Jones. They, they, mm -hmm. I think they're showing their hand a little bit with Drew Locke. Now, I'm not saying Drew Locke's a starting quarterback in the NFL. He's a perfectly fine backup. He did go in and lead a comeback drive against mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Eagles. My thought is if Jan Daniel Jones is a bust early in the year and you want to bench him, you'd be better off with a, a rookie uh, that you was a high draft pick that has potential to be a franchise quarterback. Get him out there and get him some experience. And uh, you'll still wind up, uh, you know, probably won't win many games because of, he's going to make mistakes and he, he's a rookie. And then you, you wind up with another high draft pick next year. I think with Daniel Jones anyway, you're going to end up with a high pick if you start. <laughs> that, that, that's why I said Maybe. you draft the offensive lineman, you draft the receiver, let Daniel Jones play. If he sucks, which he's prone to do, you're going to have a top 10 pick anyway. Go yeah. ahead and get another receiver. Or rather, mm -hmm. go get a quarterback. Quinn Ewers, uh, Shador Sanders. You have choices next season. They're not oh. the, the level or the abundance that they are this season. But there are some decent talents out there. Yeah. Okay. The Giants, either way. They're screwed. <laughs> we'll see. One of the best defensive lines in the NFL, but they're going to have to win games 7-3. to three. Yeah. 10-7. And m that might not even be good enough. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.